movies that changed history, and he also made appearances in such films as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Stephen King's The Stand, and also had one of the best commentaries ever for a movie for I Spit on Your Grave. Uh, He's also the man behind the three Bs, Blood, Boobs, and Beasts. Also one of the two people that I've looked up to all my life. Uh, the other one's in the front area of Bill Cardell signing autographs right now. Uh, also, Joe, uh, Joe Bob has redefined how the review movies of the phrase poop. And as you know, he's a legendary drive-in movie host, Joe Bob Briggs. We have such a cozy crowd. I think everyone should stand up and identify themselves and tell me how you spent your summer, your summer vacation. <laughs> how many are from actually from the city of Pittsburgh? That's what I thought. Like just four, and everyone else drove in from vast distances, right? Because in Pittsburgh, it's so it's so like common to have horror horror cons yeah, and and zombie fests and it's like Pittsburgh is sort of the capital of horror so everyone gets jaded so all you people that came in from West Virginia and Ohio and, and uh, Eastern Pennsylvania thank you <laughs> all right so does anyone have any questions we haven't really prepared anything I can talk about anything I have um, you know uh, uh, something will kick in in my brain if you ask me if you just throw out a word yeah. Something like that. <laughs> okay. TNT, how long were you on it? I was on TNT for about four and a half years. What, what happened is I was originally on the movie channel uh, for um, uh, nine years. And um, I was out of a job for, actually, I don't even think I was off the air more than maybe one month or something between the two networks. Um, because by the time we shot the last show on the movie channel, um, I had already made a deal to, to uh, go over to TNT and actually, I mean, it's kind of, remember when Bob Newhart did his second show and it was exactly like the first show? <laughs> That's kind of, we did the same thing. I mean, we even used the same sets and uh, the same studio and the same crew and the same everything. And the, the name changed and they put up some, uh, TNT had a little bit more money than the movie channel had and so they, they built some news. Uh, uh, sort of stuff to make it look a little slicker, but essentially it was the same chair and the same living room and the same trailer and all, everything. So, um, but that was um, uh, four and a half years on TNT, and then they changed formats. They want they wanted to be more female friendly. Was their uh, new new format? And they bought a lot of female friendly shows, and my show had always skewed very male. If you did any kind of research on it, it was a, it was a male show. I mean, I think partly because horror was male and and um, it was uh, you know not yeah. I mean, it was like 62 percent male or something. And, and in TV terms, that's like saying all male. <laughs> so um, so that's why I didn't survive the uh, format change. Anybody else have questions? Yeah. Um, for me, I just, because I'm not a, as rabid as Tim might be, how did it all start? How did it come about? Did you pitch the show? Well, the, the TV show? Yeah, um, starting, I mean, you know, I was, movie channel even. I was doing a one-man show called Joe Bob Briggs Dead in Concert. And, um, I, and, um, and I, uh, there were two things. I was doing the one-man show. And I did an article for Rolling Stone. I went to the set of um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 to interview Dennis Hopper. The Rolling Stone wanted an interview with Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper had disappeared for many years. And he was coming back. And oddly enough, he was coming back in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. That was his, that was his comeback role. And um, actually, he, was, he had an agent at the William Morris Agency who begged him not to do it and I said why did you do it and he said well because um, uh, it was Willie Nelson's birthday and he's a good friend of mine and he plays golf and I wanted to go to Austin and so <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why he made the Texas Chainsaw Master 2 which I thought he was very good in and so um, 
I, I had gone down to Austin, written this article for Rolling Stone, and um, uh, on the Movie Channel they had a, uh, 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 the Movie Channel was the fourth premium channel. It was like the only people that had it were people who already had HBO, Showtime, and Cinemax. Then if you still, uh, that wasn't enough movies for you, you <laughs> might go ahead and buy the Movie Channel. So they had a, you know, a couple million subscribers. I, Maybe more than that, I can't remember how many. But um, uh, they had trouble developing franchises and they had no money for, like, uh, they were tied into the, the movie channel. Uh, the, the fact that movie was in the name of the channel meant that they had to be 24 7 movies. And so there was no way to tr draw people to original programming. And so they decided that they would have hosts, and they had four hosts, and um, they had one guest host portion of the network, and so they asked me to come and be a guest host for one month, and then they invited me back the second month, and they invited me back the third month, and then finally it just evolved into a regular show, and um, originally they had like five or six different sets, and all the different hosts would be there filming, and then a host would get fired and you wouldn't see him anymore and then his set would slowly disappear and then the next host would get fired and then you wouldn't see his sets anymore. And finally it was just me uh, with this set in this corner of this lonely, lonely, vast stage in Spanish Harlem. It's the stage of the old Dumont Studios. It was actually where the Honeymooners was filmed. And um, it was a bad part of town, and you had to like take a cab there because it was dangerous to go there. And uh, I said, "Look, at you know, I could probably do this a lot cheaper if we just did this in Texas." And so we moved the whole thing to um, Dallas. And most years of the uh, Movie Channel show were filmed in this studio that was owned by <coughs> Ross Perot. Remember when he remember when he ran for president? Yeah. For some reason, he felt like he needed to build a whole movie studio when he ran for president. So remember, he just stood in front of a chart and he pointed to the, you know, pop up arrow. There's the federal budget. You know, and, and I'm going to solve this problem. Well, if you when he was standing in front of his pop up chart, if you had just uh, swung the camera about 30 degrees. You would have seen the whole Joe Bob set over there. <laughs> there was only two people that ever used that studio: Ross Perot and Joe Bob Briggs. And it was the nicest TV studio I've ever been in in my life. It's like TV studios are usually just like a concrete warehouse. You know, they're horrible. And it's like Ross Perot had like you know beautiful cafeteria and beautiful dressing rooms and all this stuff. And so, but we were we were the only people that ever that were ever in there. And so we. So for years we we filmed the show in the Ross Pro studio and and uh, and pretty much did whatever we wanted and then we went over to uh, and of course on on premium cable you can do everything that you want I mean the only time we ever got censored was uh, one year we did a Christmas show where uh, we had the four we had we had a uh, we had a, a Baptist and a Catholic and a Unitarian and some other religion, maybe it was a Muslim or something, and um, and to have celebrate the ecumenical spirit of the holidays, and they get into a fist fight and um, and destroy the set, and so we sent the show in. And it was just like a Christmas gag, and um, they said we can't air this show and. And um, you got to reshoot it, and, and it was just, and it was just, um, um, it was just one line because I had written the script, and it was just the Baptist guy saying to the Jewish guy, "We love you, even though you killed Jesus." <laughs> and uh, because of that one line, they didn't want to air the whole show, and so, and so we, I don't know if we changed the line or we somehow softened the line, but anyway, that was the only time we ever got censored, and. Um, uh, it was a different story at TNT. There was constant, uh, constant memos about um, words, including words that uh, were nonsense words. Um, they have a list of forbidden words that you can't say on TNT, and um, 
I would invent words that would show up on the list. You know, I remember having a conversation with the uh, standards and practices person about the word um, uh, slowhead. I just invented slowhead, and they said it was an Asian slur. And I said, No, you're mistaken. You're confusing it with the word slant eye. Slant eye is an Asian slur. If I wanted to make an Asian slur, I would say slant eye. I said slowhead. It means somebody with a stupid-looking head that slopes in the wrong direction. You know doesn't mean an Asian. And they said, well, nevertheless, it remains on the forbidden word list. As a, we, we think it's an Asian slur. And so uh, we would have ridiculous conversations like that about things you could or could not say on the air. But, um, um, and they always said, we have to be careful about Congress passing laws that regulate cable television. And I would say, you're telling me that because of the potential of someday a congressman saying something about TNT, we have to like censor ourselves, and they said, "Yes, that's what we're saying." <laughs> and so um, they would never show. Um, neither network would ever show the Texas, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which would have been the obvious thing for me to host, <laughs> and because it was on the Two Grizzly for Cable list, and uh, there were about ten films that you couldn't show, and that was one of them. And it was, and, and the reason is because politicians would make speeches about it. They would say. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is exactly the kind of thing that's wrong with the morality of this country. And they would always use it as an example, and so everyone was afraid to show it. And um, so, um, hell, uh, for a while, um, pieces, pieces couldn't be shown. Because the National Organization for Women had targeted it as an anti-female film, which I never understood because I can't see that there's any more female